Hey there, nerd. Welcome to another round of Collection Connection, a game that's nothing more than an excuse to talk about records. I play the game with my brother, Plastic Eric, who struts his stuff over on his own channel, The Plastic Soundwave Cult. Every Monday, he presents an album from his record collection, and every Thursday, I discuss an album from my record collection, right here on the Good Show Ponsonby channel. But here's the rub. While the albums may seem entirely unrelated, there's actually some delightful morsel of trivia that connects them, and we challenge you to figure out just what that connection is. But whether you're playing along or just watching along, we're mostly here to share our love of music with you. And so today I'll be forging a connection between Changes Bowie, a 1990 David Bowie best of with a complicated history, and from 1987, it's Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me the seventh studio album from Robert Smith and his merry band of fun-loving goofballs, a.k.a. The Cure. All that plus Andy Rooney will be coming up here in just a moment, but first we need to reveal the connection between the previous pair of albums, those being Jenny Lewis's The Voyager and David Bowie's Changes Bowie. This connection is between the artists not specific to the albums, and it is the fact that they both have a January 8th birthday. So the artists share a birthday. The answer was guessed successfully, once again, by Murdoch over at Murdoch's Music Minute. His latest video, he is reviewing uh, Question Mark and the Mysterians, classic track 96 Tears, I think the whole album. You can check that out over on his channel, Murdoch's Music Minute. And with that out of the way, Let's get on with the show. All right, so Eric showed David Bowie's Changes Bowie, which I have a copy of right here. It was a compilation that updated the Changes One Bowie compilation from 1976, which was just on vinyl, and I think to take advantage of the burgeoning CD market, they updated it to Changes Bowie, Interestingly, there was a Changes to Bowie that came out in 1981, I think, but only two songs from that compilation are incorporated into this one here, those being Fashion and Ashes to Ashes. Everything else was from Changes 1 Bowie or subsequent releases, most notably Let's Dance, uh, which has three songs on here, and Blue Jean from the Tonight album even though uh, Never Let Me Down was out and eligible. I guess it was bad enough, no hit singles, that nothing from it showed up on the compilation. But weirdly, the fact that they made a CD compilation updated, they still updated the vinyl compilation as well, turning it from a one-album set to a two-album set, included more songs, weirdly, Life on Mars and Starman and Sound and Vision, were also added to the vinyl version of Changes Bowie, but are not on the CD. I think Eric said that this is the only Bowie that he has. Likewise, for years, it was the only Bowie that I had, but I felt like of all the acts that were around in the 60s and the 70s, bar the Beatles, that I could be a fan of, and probably should be a bigger fan of, David Bowie was it. He was the one artists that seemed to translate relatively well into the 80s, at least with Let's Dance. A lot of the 70s stalwarts just couldn't make it uh, in the 80s or change so completely that their fan bases kind of fell away. But Bowie seemed to certainly have something. So I have a weird relationship kind of with Bowie's music. I like every song on here. But I only really love, I guess, a couple of songs. There's not, there's nothing on here that I wouldn't listen to. But uh, Modern Love is happens to be my favorite Bowie song. I've always loved the sort of self-encapsulated world of a space oddity. That definitely feels like its own thing. And kind of fashion and heroes. I think heroes has grown on me uh, as it has become more anthemic in recent years. Whenever I'm putting together a compilation... <laughs> uh, putting together a mix of my own. Anytime I try to stick a Bowie song on there, it just doesn't feel like it fits, and it doesn't feel like, well, do I want to listen to that that frequently? Not really. Uh, But I have, in the last 
decade plus acquired. Additionally, the Scary Monsters album, Low, uh, Hunky Dory, and Ziggy Stardust, which I felt like if you're going to have a David Bowie album, studio album, you kind of have to start with Ziggy Stardust, which I did. And of those, I only really listened to Scary Monsters with any kind of frequency whatsoever. I do love Sound and Vision from Low, so it's a little mystifying that they didn't make room for it on on this one. But yeah, maybe have a little more patience than Eric does for the for the deep cuts for the album tracks. But overall, it didn't end up winning me over in the way that I had hoped that it would. Uh, that I could become sort of a scholar of David Bowie, but in the end, I suppose it saves me from having to buy a deep catalog that uh, most people acknowledge even has its dips uh, in quality, even in the 70s. But it was always strange that Lowe and The Man Who Sold the World and Lodger, which are three of his most lauded albums, did not have a representative track on Changes Bowie. That just seemed weird to me. And so I wanted to pick up some of those albums, you know, and I did. I picked up Low, but never really gotten under my skin. Not sure what that's about. But yeah, that is David Bowie's Changes Bowie. And so on to the connection, which is with The Cure's 1987 album, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. The connection is not the fun fact that I wouldn't expect you to get that David Jones, which is David Bowie's birth name, and Robert Smith of The Cure possess two of the 10 most common names in the UK. David Jones is number two, and I think Robert Smith is the number nine most common name in the UK, at least as of 2017, which is uh, the most recent thing that I could find. Fun fact, but not the connection, and also not that the vinyl versions of each were double albums, while the CD was a single CD although that is swimming in much closer waters to The Connection than the name thing. Uh, the Connection is definitely based on the albums chosen and not the artists chosen. Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me was the first Cure album that I bought for myself. I was aware of them going back to England. I confess that they are a band that I made fun of in their early days. I didn't like the sort of the the mopiness and the lipstick and the whatever else kind of they had going early on. And it wasn't until close to me from the head on the door that I really super connected with one of their songs. And I love the video and that remains my favorite song. And I think my favorite album from The Cure is The Head on the Door. But the first one I bought was the follow-up, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. And that was based more on the strength of why Can't I Be You? That was the one that really uh, triggered the purchase for me and pretty quick before I think uh, Just Like Heaven even was released as a single and became uh, what felt like a zeitgeisty single but I was surprised to see that uh, although it was their first top 40 single in the US it topped out at number 40 so it just barely scraped on there. Felt ubiquitous and sort of remains to this time, I feel like their most famous single, Just Like Heaven, uh, at least in that crossroads between uh, well-known and beloved, I feel like maybe Friday I'm in Love Kate later was uh, maybe more well-known, but I think more diehard Cure fans are irritated by Friday I'm in Love than they are Just Like Heaven, or that just may be my impression. But I feel like you could take the double album of Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, and in that time-honored tradition, uh, if you could cherry-pick the songs to make it into a single album, I think the songs that I really like from Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me would condense down into a, my favorite single album. Uh, not that the tracks on here are filler, or strike me as filler. I just don't like them as much uh, as, as some. I think most of the strong songs are on the second disc. I like all the singles, Hot 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 being the other single that went along with 
Why Can't I Be You and Just Like Heaven. And I think maybe even Catch was released as a single, but maybe not in all markets. But between Catch and Why Can't I Be You on what was effectively the first side, side one, uh, or the first album, I guess. Maybe that would be... Uh, but in the first half of the CD. And then you've got kind of a ton of stuff on the second half. Just Like Heaven, Like All I Want, Hot, 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 One More Time. Uh, like Cockatoos is a Dark Horse favorite from the album. The Perfect Girl is a great pop song. Uh, a Thousand Hours, Fight. Really, Icing Sugar is probably the only weak track on side two. So if that could, my favorites condensed onto a single album, I think that would probably be my single favorite album. As it is, my corridor of the cure is Head on the Door and Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. That's my top period. I know a lot of people... Uh, love Disintegration. I have Disintegration. I like it, but uh, it's a little over ponderous for me. And the as it goes on, it feels like it sort of loses any sense of, of melody and going along, and it's all mood. So although it starts strong with uh, like Close Down and Fascination Street and tracks like that early on, by the time you get into uh, the same deep water as you and these kind of nine minute drones uh, it loses me a little bit it's not terrible I'm not saying that at all but uh, that keeps it sort of out of my top tier of Cure albums and I've since gone have the head on the door have disintegration and a couple albums sort of on either side of that I know I have wish and wild mood swings uh, are the only really ladder cure the albums that I have and uh, Three Imaginary Boys and maybe one other that I'm blanking on right now from before Head on the Door but uh, The Cure famously uh, alternative they're kind of one of the main uh, big acts out of the UK from that scene along with the Smiths and were sort of famously mopey and downbeat although it's their more silly upbeat stuff that that resonates with me the most kind of starting with the love cats and uh, caterpillar and in between days and these songs that became much lighter and the the romantic side of the cure uh, that still had a little bit of melancholy running through it and a little bit of, of sort of bee horror creepiness and so I'm not sure what else to say on the album. The version I have here is a 2006 reissue. So I had the original album. Uh, this one restores Hey You, which was a track back when the album first came out. They had to drop Hey You because CDs would only hold a maximum of 74 minutes of music. But now they hold 80 minutes of music. So um, this restores it back into the running order and includes a second disc full of demos and some uh, live recordings and things like that, alternates that I haven't listened to that much, to be honest. But it's cool to have the intended original album back uh, in my possession. And yeah, with that, I will throw The Cure's 1987 album, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, over to Eric, and he will make a connection from his collection and make a video about it and he will air that on Monday, so you can look forward to that. And in the meantime, I've said everything I have to say, so I thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good show, Ponsonby.